So have you guys found out my new skill and what I'm going to do for my channel next? Stay tuned to find out. another reaction video and today we are watching the odd ones out growing up without cable now a sister can relate to this one so this one should be good this one should be funny I've heard about the odd ones out I've heard he was hilarious I've heard he makes his own drawings and that's very creative to me so I'm very excited to watch this one but before we even get into the video let's get into these post notification shout outs okay today's post notification shout out goes to Moad Hakim Thank you so much for joining Ray Gang, and I love you so much for the little raising at you. Y'all know how much it makes me smile to say that again. Like, I am so happy I am back. And now, let's get into the video, shall we? <laughs> Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. What would you be watching right now? PBS would you be kids. watching this? I don't think so. You'd be Law watching order. this box right here. A Hello, Vision. On this device, instead of picking what you wanted to watch and when you wanted to watch it, the television would decide the all that for you. And instead of watching a single five-second skippable ad in the beginning, you'd have to watch five 30-second long unskippable ads. Hey, Can you think of anything more annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? Yes. I don't know if my parents were being cheap or trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. Yeah. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. So being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons through the TV. And if your parents didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, or Courage the Cowardly Dog. The only thing you got was this green brother and sister ah, called it, PBS it, Kids. Kids. I said it. And whatever these things were. Cow PBS Cow Kids stands for ah. Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately like funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every show. If you grew up on PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice and Where a Kid Can Be a Kid is just engraved in your memory. And also, every show would thank you, the viewer, for watching, and I think that's really nice. So, everyone watching this, you're welcome. Thank I'm you. kinda glad my parents <laughs> didn't real, buy cable. You. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching television with morals. Yep. And math. Yeah. Yep, a lot of shows on PBS were either educational or taught you how to be a good person. Very true. The shows I'm gonna mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down to earth and slice of lifey, almost like the shows were made for children. Like in Clifford the Big <gasps> oh Red Dog. It's a show about this girl's Emily dog Clifford. who grew up to be the size of a freaking house for no reason Never except that. for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much that he grew up to be a monster. So that means if your dog is normal sized, you don't love it enough. You don't love and it, it enough. probably doesn't love you. So yeah, a giant red dog is a pretty weird premise. But the episodes were about everyday things, like this blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the right? episode where this new dog moves into town, oh, but the... he's missing yeah. a leg, and then Clifford and his friends have to learn that having three legs still means you can accomplish a lot of things any normal human can do. I mean, dog. And I rate this show oh. a 10 out of 10. Next Amen. is Dragon Tales, the show that made dragons yes! kid-friendly. There's Org, he's the biggest, not so brave of heart. There's Cassie, she's so shy, oh but God, so very smart. There's Zach and Wheezy and their tales of fun. Cause you know two heads, heads are better than one. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's, it's almost time for Dragon Tales. Dragon tales. The show is pretty Get similar to Clifford. The characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show oh their friend God, what a I rainbow looks twins. like. And there was also this grandpa dragon oh, who knew senior. Spanish for some reason. Don't come too close, niños. And that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character 
in a wheelchair, which just like Clifford this show is a was good just character top because tier. it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. Yes. But I think it's a weird combination of two things. A dragon, a mythical beast known for destroying cities, in a wheelchair? Oh. If you wanted to stop a dragon from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anywhere. Oh, no. I should stop talking. I rate the show a 10 out of 10. Period. Now let's talk about Arthur. Here's some fun let's trivia. Arthur, Arthur is supposed to be an aardvark. Personally, I don't see it. Basically, it was Arthur? a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. Is like, they have episodes where DW hears her parents get in a fight like and she worries about them wrong. getting a divorce, or the episode where Arthur Falcon punches his little sister, Remember, Dad. and even having to deal with someone you know getting cancer. What? The lunch cancer? lady! The character gets yeah. treatment and lives, by the way. You guys, man, I... Because it's a kid's show. I stay watching these Next, shows. Next, let's talk about my favorite oh. show on PBS Kids. Love it. Cyber Chase. Let's Cyber yeah. Chase, we're moving. I'll make a theme song. This game, the motherboard, and we're the motherboard. This show didn't teach kids morals or how to properly they treat the uh, It taught them something far more important. Math. Cyber Chase yeah. is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one character named Motherboard was supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, nah, Christopher real. Lloyd, infects her with a virus. For so real. now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles to yep. thwart the bad guy's plans to save Mommy Board. <laughs> but motherboard? But motherboard? But mommy? Mom, we need to save Mommy Board. Is it mommy? And unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but, never but got nothing a chance they to did ever worked. Get to when I was a kid, I to. always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally saved her. Like, I'm about and to be 21. Did. The show's been going on for 16 years, and they're still learning new math principles trying to save Motherboard. I think they're at calculus at this point. The <gasps> show is teaching you slower than an actual school. What kind of a show makes you wait 16 years for a conclusion? Just to get to the plot! Cyber Chase I mean... does, and it's one of the best shows ever created. 10 out of 10. True. One last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need to know about Caillou is that I hate him. Caillou is a four-year-old no. and a demon. He constantly throws a tantrum his whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in this were... theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. Exactly. Growing up is not so tough, except when I've had enough. And then he's crying like a child. Well, you're gonna have to grow up, Caillou. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now you might be thinking, James, this kid is four years old. Of course so... he's gonna be a brat. And I agree, but, but a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat, but it's with his spineless parents. Caillou's mom just lets him get away with everything. I'm Whenever whooped. I misbehaved, you know what happened to me? I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? Nothing. Not once <laughs> Nothing. does Caillou ever get punished. It's always his mom just being like, No, what? Not whooped. I was sitting in the corner too. Nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of ten with the show with just the humans. I hate it. I just realized that Why all the shows I mentioned were animated, Wait. but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still <gasps> watched. Lions. But whatever, oh I could just God, say Zool, that these shows are on my channel. Or it could make a part two. I can do whatever I want. Now, as a die-hard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. Oh How God. hard would it have been yes. for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tails people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog yes. finds the dragon scale, he could dig it up out of the sand because dogs like to dig, oh. except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging. And then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. I would have loved that. As that much as I'm so joking cute about as it, a as a kid, growing up. I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford okay. and Clifford's Puppy Days, which is another show that. that follows Clifford before he was interesting, I when he was that. tiny, so before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch of new characters that all knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his childhood home, and then all the other characters who used to call him small or exactly. squat would see him now right. and be like, Are you boys? Wow. What the f happened to you? <laughs> you see, it's funny because it's a kid's show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. I waited patiently no, but they for that crossover it. episode, but it never came. Mm. You know, I thought. But at least I have fan fiction. George, he wagged his tail and huh? smiled. Clifford, it's so good to see you. 
He nuzzled him as a greeting. Nice to see you too. It's been over seven years since I last about? saw you. Yeah, it had, Clifford said happily. George turned oh. his back to the hill. Here I come. It's no quotation marks, by the way. He got ready to tackle him. He punched George up Whoa, and they yeah. rolled down. Then when they got to the bottom, George pinned Clifford, who was panting. The three looked at the two of them, who seemed to be having a staring contest. So they decided to go what day is somewhere what else. Am I watching? Both laughed and Clifford got off of him. He sat down and waited for George to stand up. So, what are we gonna do? The red dog said while quickly getting into no! a playing position. Okay, that's enough. Hello everyone, I'm back. Did any of you watch these shows as a kid? That's cool, I guess. No, we didn't do that to Clifford. Oh my God, that really brought back nostalgia feels. I used to watch literally all of those shows. Sesame Street, Zoom, Between the Lions is an ultimate classic. And that is why I love to read today. And then you got Dragon Tales. 20 out of 10, Dragon Tales will always be and forever will be the go. And then you got Cyber Chase Elite, but long. He's right about that. Growing up without cable, stimulating and challenging. But I will say though, coming home after school and you knew what shows was about to come on and you was ready for those shows to come on because you knew exactly what time those shows were coming on, really meant something to you as a nine-year-old or five-year-old. It really hit you deep. Like, Arthur, I don't care. Every day when you walk down the street, everybody that you meet, I don't care. That was a jam. DW got on my nerves. Caillou, hate the parents, always hated the parents. They should really make an adult version of Caillou and show us how he is with his parents now. That is something I would want to see because I just know, I bet you any money, his parents are probably the same wimpy piece of garbage they are. How do you raise a child to be over you? Tantrums don't get you far. I'm just gonna say that now. They don't. And then for me, back in the day, I was always good with watching cartoons after school because I always did my homework at school and I would always get done with my homework at school. So when I got home and I lived right up the street, I'd come in that house, I'd tell my mother, I'd show her my work too. I'm like, all right, it's time for my shows. And then I was young watching Law and Order and stuff like that too with my PBS kids and my Between the Lions. So I was good. So I was in my glory. Oh my goodness, but I could ramble about cartoons and nostalgia cartoons all day. If you guys have any more of these that you want me to see, please let me know in the comments down below. All One Dow is definitely a new one. He's added to the collection. I like him. He's funny. He gets what we're going through. He gets what we went through as well, and I like that. And without a doubt, I'll have you guys to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Give me more videos to react to. Give me challenges to try. Give me songs to sing. And give me stuff to do. And I love you, Ray Gang.